Happy New Year. And we welcome you to Gethsemane Lutheran Church as we celebrate the Epiphany of our Lord, in which we remember the Magi bringing gifts to Jesus. Special welcome to anyone who's visiting this morning and our guests and the people visiting via the telecast. And we're excited you joined us for worship today. And we ask you, as always, to sign the attendance list in the pews. Now, if your pew doesn't have one, that's okay. Look for the pew in front of you because sometimes there's just one person in a pew. Look for uh, one in front or behind you and, and please sign that because they, the people that be keep records of that. This morning we celebrate communion. Uh, all are welcome to come to the Lord's table. Feast on Christ's body and blood. And the other announcements happen after worship. So... I would invite you to stand as we continue with our confession and forgiveness liturgy in the front of the bulletin. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, breath of heaven. Let us confess our sinfulness before God and one another trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God, Give us your righteousness and strength to put aside our failures and the courage to try again. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ the Savior is born. You are loved and forgiven in the name of Jesus who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Amen.
the grace and loving kindness of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Word made flesh, born of the Virgin Mary, be with you all. And let us pray. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Gotcha. The Feast of the Epiphany, Manifestation, concludes the Christmas season with a celebration of God's glory revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah, that glory is proclaimed for all nations and people. Like the light of the star that guided the Magi to Jesus, the light of Christ reveals who we are, children of God who are claimed and washed in the waters of baptism. We are sent out to be beacons of the light of Christ, sharing the good news of God's love to all people. The first reading is from Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6. It's page 602 in the Pew Bible, from the 60th chapter of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son, sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian, Midian and Epha, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. And when King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, the prophet Micah, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard, heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, 
until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star they had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Okay, I guess BC, we're not singing that. Again. Okay, I do. In uh, I do invite the children who wish to to come forward for the children's sermon. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, it's me. Come on up. I'm just slow getting there. Good. Oh my, we got all you kinds of people, and some of you are singing today. I see you have your shirts on. Hooray! That's, oh, now you're going to show me your shirt. Good. Well, now it's a whole new year, right? 2020. And Christmas was kind of a long way ago, wasn't it? And I bet I, did you have a good Christmas? Nobody had a bad Christmas. You can't have a bad Christmas when you're a child, hopefully. Good. Now, question about Christmas. Is the Christmas tree down? Anybody still have a Christmas tree up? Good for you. Good for you. All right. All right. Well, lots of people bring their Christmas trees down now. But today, we're celebrating something called Epiphany. And you guys who are singing in the choir know because it's it's the light of the... Let my little light shine, right? And you're going to sing during the offering. And we're looking forward to that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute too. But Epiphany is... 12, the 13th day after Christmas. And in many countries, and long, long ago, Christmas gifts were given on Epiphany rather than Christmas Day. That's before all the stores got into it and, and we got to be industrialized and all that sort of stuff. I was for the adults. And all that. And what happened on Christmas Day, people got little gifts, maybe an apple or an, something like that. And then on Epiphany the big gifts came. But that's different. So, indeed, today is the 12th, tomorrow actually is Epiphany, January 6th. But Pastor and Laura and I cheated, and we made Epiphany today because it was easier to preach on than something in between. So it's really the 12th day of Christmas. And you know those 12 days songs, so we'll talk about that later. All right, so I brought for Epiphany a light bulb because... Part of Epiphany is let your light shine and arise and see the light of the world who is Jesus. Now, just a simple little light bulb. Do you guys still read comic books sometimes? Oh, good. That's, I, ho- I figured they, you know, you don't necessarily get them on the internet or on the other stuff. When there's a light bulb in a comic book, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means someone has an idea. Somebody has an idea. Fantastic. Good job. Yes. And that's what Epiphany is about. The light of the world has come. And we are to see it and realize that Christmas and Christ, the light of the world, has come and still shines brightly. And that's our prayer for the new year. That the light of Christ, that little light of mine, might shine in each of you today and tomorrow, the whole year long, and forever, even as you get old and big and maybe even as old as me. Oh, what's a scary thought. Yes, indeed. Well, will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for sending us Jesus, the light of the world. Help us to be little lights that shine for you every day and forever. And you know how the rest of this goes. And ever. And ever. And one more ever. 
Amen. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, now that's the toughest part of the children's sermon, getting back up. I had a P.S. to the children's sermon. Today was a very, this was a more difficult task to put a sermon together with all the different things because almost there was too much to say. It's a new year, it's epiphany, and as we talk about those 12 days of Christmas. But since music is such an important part, today is really the 12th day of Christmas, tomorrow's epiphany, and I wanted to just say one thing and let you Google it about the, the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas. It almost became the sermon, but it wouldn't have been done justice to the gospel lesson. And while The Twelve Days of Christmas seems like a silly little song with its lyrics, really it has a meaningful message in some coded language. Because when it was written, the Anglican Church had broken away from the Catholic Church in Europe, and Catholics were outlawed in England. And this song was a way for those people to remember things. You've got to Google it to get the whole thing or you'd get the whole sermon. But my true love is God, gave to me as believers, and then there's the gift. And I'm only going to tell you about the first one because that's the, you get to do the rest. The partridge in a pear tree is the gift of Jesus wrapped up in, in the manger and all of that. And the partridge is used because the partridge is the one bird that will die to defend its young. And that fits with Jesus. You Google the rest. That's the part that I had there, but I, it was just important part of what I had. So grace and peace to you and God our Father from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The messages and themes of Epiphany. Arise, shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord will shine in the darkness. And there's something about that star of wonder, star of light. Now, for me, we've actually, my wife and I have lived here in, some, in Lexington for over 20 years, longer than any place in our whole lives, even as children. And I did serve the church, and it's almost been five years now since I retired, in Somerset. I do have a place down there, in Somerset, south of Burnside Island. It overlooks Woodson Bend if you really know the place, but I call it the abode. It was supposed to be a place we visited a lot, but I would stay there when I was needed to be in Somerset for periods of time. And indeed, there's, there was one night here in Lexington where I just wanted to go outside. It was a goofy day. I needed to be outside in the back porch. And I wanted to look up at the sky and see the stars and, and just do all that. I was sorely disappointed. There was so much light. There's a great big oak tree in our backyard. I could hear the Harrisburg tra Harrodsburg Road traffic. And the city lights blocked out any notion of being able to see something up in the sky along with the tree. And I say that because, by contrast, at the abode, I'm out in the country, and the first night after I bought the place and stayed there, it was a full moon. And I couldn't believe how bright it was, and the light, and that theme of light. And I'm, I'm attracted to that, and there's a wonder about that, kind of like I see in the star of wonder that attracted the Magi. Now, if you know the Somerset area, you also know that there's Cumberland Falls down there, and the unique thing about Cumberland Falls, other than it takes about 15 minutes of Kentucky Mountain Roads either way to get there from 75 or 27, is that there's a moon bow. And when the full moon is at its brightest and hits the waterfalls just right, it makes a rainbow. But it's a moonbow, not a rainbow, from the water and all that scientists know that make that happen. And 
I say that just because as I see and try to understand the attraction of the magi, the wise men, to that star of wonder, the moonbow has that attraction to me also because whenever it's a full moon and I'm up here, I think about Cumberland Falls and the moonbow, and there's a certain attraction to that. That being said, let's get on with the, the gospel lesson. And now you understand how I had so much to say besides. Well, we also often say better late than never as we look at the gospel story. And, and some folks even may turn it around who uh, shudder to, to see some people and say better never than late. But that's a different story. The wise men were folks who were included in the original celebration at the manger. But let's look at some facts for a minute. In fact, they were not there at the same time as the shepherds, or even maybe. We assume he was around, but they never mention the innkeeper because he's in a house. They are latecomers to the first Christian Christmas celebration. A different time, even though in the manger and the creches, we, we put them all together because that's the way it fits. So a little bit about wise men, some facts and the star and things. The wise men were latecomers to the Christmas celebration, three kings, the magi. The word magi is an old Persian, Iranian word that, um, that they inherit, uh, they have their religion and that studied the stars and folk legends. Now, most likely they were not kings. And it's in question how many magi there really were, despite the song. And there are three, always mentioned by tradition, because there were three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we make assumptions. Now, this one's a little more far-fetched. They may not all have been men, for that matter. Might have been some wise women. And after all, they did stop and ask for directions from Herod. <laughs> Sorry about that one. The story could have occurred as long as two years from the manger scene in Bethlehem. They note that they had seen the star at its rising, which was some time in the past. It gets a little more, there's interest and conjecture over what exactly the star was. Some say maybe a supernova, planets coming together, or a comet. You can pick your theory. But a fascinating, strange one that came up as I was researching. Some have explained that the star was actually an angel, a bright messenger from heaven, calling them to come. Now, the reasoning for that is in Revelations, the angels were messengers of the seven churches, and they are depicted as stars in the hands of Jesus. Just a new thought that may or may not matter. Regardless of those answers, we know that the Magi saw something unusual, that light in the sky, that star of wonder, I want to call it. And according to the legends they had studied, they deduced it was an important child had been born in Judea, the land of the Jews. Now the Persians would have known quite a bit about Jewish belief systems as their ancestors, the Babylonians, had captured Jerusalem and held the Jews in exile about 500 years earlier. So the Magi's curiosity, their wonder, led them on their late Christmas journey. And you know, there is room at the inn for them. And that's strange because they were foreigners and not the ones that you would expect, but with the message that Jesus was born for all the world. Now, as we pursue it a little further, the truth about God can be found everywhere, and evidently anywhere too. The Magi are kind of proof of that. They're not Jewish. They're not even Christian, through, though their history led them to believe in one God. 
They did not fit, though, the normal criteria for someone who had likely come to visit Jesus or Christ. And who would expect that these guys or even gals from a pagan society would come such a great distance at great cost with expensive gifts to worship a child. It was some wondering and some curiosity. But of course, the whole Christmas story is about God doing the unexpected. After all, when you think about it, isn't it? Think about it. A teenage virgin mother, a reluctant stepfather, a baby born in a barn on the backside of nowhere. And the first witnesses to the event is a bunch of smelly shepherds. You get the idea. So now, add to this cast of folks, these mystical, magical philosophers, astronomers, as among the first to see what God was up to. We use all that because it makes one wonder just where God might be trying to send us messages of truth in our own time. Those messages. But the real question is not where God might be trying to send them, but if we were to hear that truth, that speaking from God, what would we do with it? And that's where the story continues and is very interesting. What do you do next when you hear from God? And it indi that indicates what kind of faith you actually have. The three sets of characters in the story, they heard the truth about the baby born in Bethlehem, and each had a different reaction. So let's look. First, the priests and the scribes. They had all the right knowledge and the information, and they quoted Micah, Wrote to Herod as soon as he had asked, where is this kid they're talking about to be born? They knew a Messiah was coming, and there were even rumors, if you're in religious circles, of some kind of birth out there. Then there is Herod. He had the message from the Magi, which troubled him, and now confirmation from his own court experts a pretty strong signal that something big was happening in the kingdom. And, of course, there were the Magi. Themselves, they had the star and the story. And they got what they needed when they got what they needed from their stopover in Jerusalem. They moved on. Interestingly enough, as soon as they decided on the next step of their journey, the light of the star reappears again to them. So as we see the reactions, or the, what they had, there are reactions from each of these characters. And that's important. The priests and the scribes. Well, they'd given Herod the information. They went right back to work, business as usual. Nothing changed for them. Kind of an, oh, isn't that interesting? response. Herod, on the other hand, got worried. He was afraid there was a new king coming and it would upset his personal apple cart and pretty badly, pretty badly and could ultimately cost him his power, his prestige, and even his kingship. So he better find a way to take care of that king. And the magist, Magi, well, they followed the light that they had been given. And at the end of the trail, they worshipped and gave gifts. Expensive gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So as we move on with that, which of the three characters got it right? Now, we need to be careful, I believe, as we look at it in our own time about coming to God's house week after week, hearing the good news, 
and maybe just continually leaving with a business as usual kind of attitude. Because God is continually speaking to us here and in those unexpected moments of our lives and is continually forming, shaping, and reshaping us, possibly even redirecting us in the choices we are making. And we know it's dangerous to ignore God. To hear God's truth, I believe it begins with wonder at the light, the light of the world, the star, or even the moonbeam. The other characters, worrying about what following God's will will cost us is not a good option either. Herod did a pretty good job of placing him on the, himself on the throne of his life. He was willing to murder to keep things under his own control, killing not only his own family members, but that slaughter of the innocents in Matthew, just a few verses beyond our gospel. But in the end, what happened to him? History tells us he went insane and died after being exiled by the Roman emperor Caligula. So it is the outsiders, the unlikely candidates in the story, that give us the example of faith. And as we've done so many stories in the Old Testament and otherwise, the people who would be considered outside are often given the place of honor by Jesus and, and used for God's purpose in ways even they would not understand. The outsiders, the magi, unlikely, but give us the example of faith because they put feet to their prayers, if you will. They got up and went in a direction that God revealed to them and they expressed their faith in real practical terms with worship of the newborn and gifts. Not only did they fulfill their journey seeing the king, but move forward with a renewed faith. Of course, it didn't mean from then on their way was easy before seeing the Christ child or even thereafter. And there's a message there for us. Following Christ may lead you on a road less traveled. So what happened? The Magi got a warning about going back the same way they came. And just in case the wise men weren't wise enough to figure out that Herod was, was power hungry and deceitful. They dreamed about taking a different way home. That way home might have been a harder journey. It may have taken them longer. It probably was more costly in their efforts and expense. But it was the right way to go. We may need to take some different paths in our own lives and Maybe New Year's resolutions are supposed to help do that. But different paths in our lives, once we have seen and heard God's message for us, we've seen the wonder of the star, and it's made an impact. It may not always be the smooth or popular way that we are called to walk. The path may get steep. The cost may be high. But what we do know, is God has promised to walk with us and guide us. Robert Frost in The Road Not Taken. Just the very ending part. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I. I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Such a pretty good metaphor for our call to walk the way with Christ on this day and every day that lies ahead of us and as we enter a new decade and beyond. What a challenge, what a venture, what a thrill and that star of wonder that Christ will lead us.
to that I say, amen. And our hymn of the day is the first Noel 300. I invite you to turn to page six in your bulletin because our our, decor- our affirmation of faith is not the Apostles' Creed, but uh, a little different version here. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, whom have every family in earth and have is named. 
We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathered with all who seek the Christ child, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Faithful God, continue to provide dedicated leaders and passionate people for your church so that wisdom and compassion in all of its rich variety may be known throughout the world. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Creating God, your glory shines around us in every star, creature, and person. Liberate us from the ways we destroy your creation. Free us to care for the earth so that all experience your bountiful goodness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Give your justice to the leaders of the world, O God. Endow them with humble courage to defend the cause of the poor and give deliverance to those in need so that peace abounds in all countries. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. By the guidance of a star, you led the Magi to pay homage to the Christ child. Protect new families those who live alone, travelers, those who suffer loss, and all others in need. We include all from our prayer list, and the ones we now name either silently within our hearts or aloud. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ever present one, in Christ Jesus we boldly come before you in worship. Nurture and encourage all who gather for worship, those who serve in worship leadership roles, and all who participate in the work of this faith community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, throughout time you have given us people who have shown us the gift of your grace. Inspire us by their faithfulness to serve you and all your people. We also lift up these saints from our prayer calendar this week, including the Schepfer, Schweitzer, Secord, Seidel, Sims, Sorrell, and Sparks families, as well as their loved ones. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your gracious hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast mercy through Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As angels of God heralded God's peace to those in darkness and fear, God is also present in our time of need. And the peace of Christ be with you. Let us share the peace with one another.
thank you, the youth of the congregation, for singing. From my vantage point over there, it was great to see the, the kids lighting up things. And yet, the children in the pews that are of adult age that sang along or hummed along or smiled along make this community special. With that, our offering prayer. Let us pray. God with us, you came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and his resurrection, we await his coming again, when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Now, you need page 9 a minute, just because Pastor Laura has done this to me when uh, I have to explain it. Instead of the Lord's Prayer, it is the Lord's Prayer, but it's sung to the tune of Away in a Manger, so you need to be on page 9 to follow along and sing. that delightful it kind of fits you never know when the surprise comes or God talks to us in a different way and certainly that was one of those times love has come God's love for all people come and eat for Christ invites you and just since I'm a 
substitute pastor today. If you wish a gluten-free wafer or uh, that, you just need to let me know and I will find them and we'll make it work. Okay, please be seated.
Let us stand for the communion blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us forever in his amazing grace. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world, the world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
Again, a special welcome to guests. We are glad for you joining us this morning in worship. If you plan on making an announcement, you know the drill. You just go up to the front, so the microphone, so others can hear you. And please take home your entire bulletin so you can know what's happening for the next few weeks. Microphone, you're on. Thank you for the children and your music. I have two. Oh, sorry. The first one is next week. You're all invited to the blessed service at 6 o'clock, and we'll have a light supper afterward. And Karen's going to be speaking, and Dave is going to provide a prelude. Um, the second thing is I have music now in the order of worship for the Christian Unity Service, which will be held uh, three weeks from today, January 26th at 7 at Pox Christi. So if you're interested in singing with the choir, they're going to rehearse at 5.30 right just prior to the service. Or if you want to play an instrument, they, I, they just said instrumentalist and vocalist welcome. So let, just see me if you're interested. Thanks. I have a few items. Um, first thing is we're taking down all the Christmas decorations, so anybody who can stay after and help, we would really appreciate it because it's going to take a while. Um, the second thing is we are still looking for a chair for the Congregational Life and the Outreach Committees. Um, the annual meeting is the end of this month, and we really would like to have someone, some people in place in those committees, so um, please search your heart and see if you are willing to chair those committees. Um, you can talk to Kelly, me, Melanie, um, Megan, Chris Williams. Um, just let us know. Thank you. Um, and also, a fun thing, at Project Day on the 22nd this month, Pam Anderson is willing to teach anybody to knit. So if you're interested in learning how to knit, there is a sign-up sheet on the GLCW bulletin board outside the fellowship hall so she knows how many needles and yarn to bring. All you have to do is show up, and she'll be happy to teach you how to knit. Thank you. Just real quick, I know a lot of you have made New Year's resolutions to sing in the choir, so we're going to start rehearsing on Thursday uh, at 6.30 again for choir practice. Thanks. Two quick ones. One is a reminder from fellowship that the annual meeting is coming up at the end of this month. There is a sign-up sheet outside for you to sign up to bring snacks, to bring chilies, to bring side items. Drinks and cleanup and setup will be handled by the fellowship committee. Everybody is encouraged to bring whatever you can because, let's face it, all of you feed all of us. And the second thing is your annual contribution statements from 2019 are outside, uh, right behind where my family usually sits. Feel free to pick those up. If you don't see yours, check with your family and then check with me. Oh, we're done. That's even better. Okay, good. Send us on our way, Art.